In this video, I'll talk about the meaning of the mean value theorem. Here is what the mean value theorem says. If a function f is defined on the closed interval a to b, and if two conditions are satisfied, f is continuous over the closed interval, and f is differentiable over the open interval, then there is a real number c between a and b, where the derivative of f evaluated at c is equal to the difference quotient evaluated between x equals a and x equals b. What is this saying? Let's break it down a bit. On the right side of the equation, the difference quotient represents the average rate of change of f over the interval from a to b. And on the left side, this is the instantaneous rate of change of f at x equals c. And the theorem is saying that if the two conditions in the list are met, there is some value of c where the instantaneous rate of change is equal to the average rate of change. To understand what this means in a context, let's think about the speed of a car driving on a 60-mile section of a road. As the car drives down the road, it speeds up. We'll let the function f represent the car's distance from its starting position in miles, and x will be the number of hours elapsed since it started driving. So the car starts at zero hours elapsed and completes its drive after two hours have elapsed. And its distance at the start is zero miles and at the end is 60 miles. So in this scenario, the average rate of change of f is the car's average speed over its entire drive. So a is equal to zero hours, b is equal to two hours, f of a is equal to zero miles, and f of b is equal to 60 miles and this average speed is 30 miles per hour. So the mean value theorem is saying that there is some moment in time between zero and two hours when the speed of the car at that moment is equal to exactly 30 miles per hour. It can also be helpful to think about what the mean value theorem says in terms of a graph. Here is a graph of a function, f. Pause the video and see if you can find a value c so that f prime of c is equal to the difference quotient. The coordinates of the left endpoint are negative 2 comma f of negative 2 and of the right endpoint are 7 comma f of 7. So in this case, the value of a is negative 2 and the value of b is 7. And the denominator is equal to 9. On the graph, the denominator of 9 represents the amount of change in x, and the numerator represents the amount of change in f. And the value of this difference quotient is equal to the slope of the secant line connecting the two endpoints. Let's imagine a tangent line at x equals x0. The slope of this tangent line would be f prime of x0. For this value of x0, the tangent line does not appear to be parallel to the secant line, so the slope of the tangent line would not be equal to the slope of the secant line. Let's increase the value of x0 and see what happens to the slope of the tangent. For this particular value of x0, the tangent line now appears to be parallel to the secant line, so the tangent line now has the same slope as the secant line, and this value of x0 would make the instantaneous rate of change equal to the average rate of change. Now, we don't know exactly what the value of c is. We would need some additional information about the values of f. But the mean value theorem tells us that some such value exists. Let's look at a graph of another function. Here is a graph of another function. Like the previous function, it is defined on the interval from negative 2 to 7. So we can ask, is there a real number c in the interval from negative 2 to 7 where f prime of c is equal to this difference quotient? Pause the video and see if you can find such a value for c. To visualize this, we'll draw a secant line between the endpoints of the graph of the function on this interval. Then, the slope of the secant line is equal to the average rate of change of f over this interval, which is computed using the difference quotient. Graphically, the instantaneous rate of change is represented by the slope of a line tangent to the graph of f. So, let's start looking at the tangent lines at the left endpoint of the interval. 
the slope of this purple tangent line doesn't match the slope of the green secant line. Let's increase the value of x0 and see if we get a match. There weren't any values of x0 where the slope of the purple tangent line appeared to match the slope of the green secant line. In other words, there wasn't a real number c in the interval where f prime of c was equal to the average rate of change. Why did this happen? You might have noticed that this function was not continuous at x equals 7. This is what produced the secant line that wasn't parallel to any of the tangent lines. And in the statement of the mean value theorem, one of the conditions was that for the mean value theorem to work, the function needed to be continuous on the entire interval. Let's look at one more example. Here is a graph of another function. Like the previous function, it is defined on the interval from negative 2 to 7. So, we can ask, is there a real number c in the interval from negative 2 to 7 where f prime of c is equal to this difference quotient? Pause the video and see if you can find such a value for c. To visualize this, we'll draw a secant line between the endpoints of the graph of the function on this interval. Then, the slope of the secant line is equal to the average rate of change of f over this interval, which is computed using this difference quotient. As we did with the last function, let's start looking at the tangent lines at the left endpoint of the interval. The slope of this purple tangent line doesn't match the slope of the green secant line. Let's increase the value of x0 and see if we get a match. There weren't any values of x0 where the slope of the purple tangent line appeared to match the slope of the green secant line. In other words, there wasn't a real number c in the interval where f prime of c was equal to the average rate of change. Why did this happen? You might have noticed that this function has a cusp right around x equals 4, so it wasn't differentiable there. This is what prevented the tangent lines from being parallel to the secant line. And, in the statement of the mean value theorem, one of the conditions was that, for the mean value theorem to work, the function needed to be differentiable on the interval. To summarize what we've seen, we looked at the statement of the mean value theorem. We looked at an example to see what it meant for there to be a point c, so that the instantaneous rate of change at c was equal to the average rate of change over the interval. Then we saw another example to see why the theorem only works for functions that are continuous on the entire interval. And then we looked at a third example to see why the theorem only works for functions that are differentiable on the interval.